Dear viewers, this is an interesting novel by an Indian writer where fiction made her a woman novelist of substance. You are introduced to the fiction of Anita Desai, which should appeal to you a sense of reading. There is an analysis of the novel. The narrative techniques which Anita Desai employs are discussed. Uh, reading material is given which helps you to comprehend the novel is better terms all the best here i will give you an introduction to the fiction of anita desai and an analysis of where shall we go this summer and a critical assessment of the novel and select reading materials and the text anita desai is the foremost indian women novelist in contemporary india and where shall we go this summer proves that she is one of the most distinguished women novelist of indian writing in english after listening this you appreciate and state reasons why anita desai is regarded as a distinguished women novelist and Read the other major novels of Anita Desa like Cry the Peacock, Fire on the Mountain, and A Clear Light of Day, Journey of Ithaca, and Fasting and Feasting. Estimate the intrinsic merits of Anita Desa as a novelist of distinction. Now let's go to the introduction. This unit gives you a brief introduction to Anita Desa and her fictional technique. Anita Desai and her fiction. Anita Desai was born in Masuri on 24th June 1937. Her father was a Bengali and mother a German. She had her early education in Delhi at a Queen Mary's school. Then at Miranda House. She took her BA in English Literature in 1957, Delhi University. Her sole interest is writing fiction. As a novelist, she has been influenced by the fictional works of Emily Bront, D. H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, Henry James, Proust Dostoevsky, and the Japanese writer Kawabata. She has a theory of fiction, although she does not want to be labeled as a theorist. In her various interviews and talks, she expressed her definite, definite views on the role of creativity, construction of the novel and her individual style. Anita Desai tries to synthesize the intricate balance of the inner content with the outer form. To study the fiction of Anita Desai is to study the fine balance of the human mind in relationship to the forces within and the outer environment of society. For Anita Desai, writing is an expression of imaginative release from the op oppressed self where one tries to discover order and normalcy. She defines writing as a process of exploration and discovery of the inner rhymes, rhythms of individuals. She takes four analogies to explain her creative process, the fluids in the chemical process, the waiting of official men, the waving of a basket and a grain of sand in turning a shell. These analogies highlight the creative mode in our fiction. The first example is the fluids in a chemical reaction. She explains that a writer or a novelist selects his own material. He selects whatever seems significant to him and putting all these fluids together he boils them until they are reduced to a certain essence. That is what a novelist can do, being able to give his readers the essential truth. The second analogy is the waving of a basket. She says that you are given too much straw and you sit down and place it together and you make a shape out of it. And the fact that you have been able to make this basket certainly helps you. The third example is the relevant analogy from Virginia Woolf. A writer is rather like a fisherwoman who is sitting on the bank of a river or a pond and she lets down a line into the water. The writer lets her imagination into her consciousness, giving 
plenty of time and waits allowing it to explore her submerged self. When the pulls up the line, it is her idea of novel. Anita Desai further speaks about her creative process in the last analogy. Analogy. The original germinating idea enters the mind quite obscurely and might be no more than a leaf dipping under a raindrop, a face seen on the bus, or a scrap of news read in the paper. It enters the consciousness slowly and silently and unabrosively un as a grain of sand enters a shell. Then it grows and develops around that grains of sand which becomes the focal although invisible point of concentration so that it swells, takes shape and begins to stir to life. Eventually this grain grows into such a mass that it begins to exert a pressure. One finds that the oyster has not given birth to pearl, pale and lustrous and decorative, but to something like a monster that one has inadvertently brought to life and that is bursting and clamoring to be let out. It will burst and spill like some inky shadow over a clean sheet of paper over one's days and nights overcoming one's protests, one's daily work and eventually a book. These are her views about the creative process. Anita Desai takes a definite stand regarding her ideal book. In an ideal book, imagination and discipline fuse. One struggles constantly to achieve the perfect balance. The perfect novel achieves to perfect balance with just as much a story or as much a fantasy as a structure can bear. She further adds that if I exp express anything about in no reality, it is certainly not as a result of any abstract thought or any delicate cerebral and intellectual activity. I think the ideas really grew out of the material and it, it makes no sense unless it is united by one unifying idea. The organizing principle of the novel is the unifying idea, a focus which may unite impressions, sensations, ideas and images to form a perfect whole. In no reality or creative art for Anita Desai is an exploration and not an escape from reality. Life is a reality you see on the surface, the visible world, while literature plants the depths below that lie hidden and need to be explored and described. She focuses her attention on depth which is interesting delving deeper in a character sense, seen rather going round about it. She has faith in the incomplete and uh, chameleonic mass of reality around her. She tries to discover its significance by plunging below the surface and plumbing the depths, then illuminating these depths till they become a more lucid, brilliant and explicable reflection of the visible world. She holds the view that a writer follows flashes of individual vision and depends on a kind of trend instinct that tells him what to follow and what to avoid, how to veer away from what would be destructive to his vision. It is these flashes of vision and a kind of trend instinct that leads him to her writing is a process of Discovering truth, the truth that is nine tenths of the iceberg that lies submerged beneath the one tenth visible portion we call reality. Writing is my way of plunging to the depths and exploring the underlying truth. All my writing is an effort to discover, to underline and convey the true significance of things. It is her private effort to seize upon the raw materials of life and impose and it is a 
design, a certain composition and order. She is keen to trace the loose threads of life to remake it to a new design or pattern. Writing to Anita Desai is a very meditative act and requires perfect solitude. She is a close observer of human nature. She indicates that every human being's territory is really very very small and all you can explore is a very tiny section of this territory. She likes individuals always and invariable. She draws from characters who are not average but have retreated or been driven into some extremity of despair and so turned against or made a stand against the general current. It is easy to flow with current. It makes no demands. It costs no effort. But those who cannot follow it, whose heart cries out the great no, who fight the current and struggle against it, they know what the demands are and what it costs to meet them. In her private cosmology, the solitary individual highlights the constant struggle to resist, not buckle under the general flow of life. Her individuals fight against external pressures which want to eat away their very existence. Her deciphering of submerged reality points to a process of gasping the inner essence of a person. It is a complex process which strips and reduces man to the barest minimum. His confrontation within has a direct bearing on the outside environment is influenced and shaped by magic voices within and without. The voice may lead him to complete negation. The vital life force may be zapped or they may grow into sudden revelation of truth which may come in any unexpected moment. The artistic merit of Anita Desa lies in her capacity to decode what lies beneath the false bottom, the surface reality. Her ideas are incorporated in her characters, the embody her motives, the motive to action, and the inward turns of the mind turn the attention from external environment to inner action. Anita Desai attempts to explore the essence of truth in the unknown modes of solitary individuals. Her novels are set in a world of the subterranean a lace of anguished cells. Her universe is confined to a tiny territory of individuals. Her individuals search for the underlying truth and the interior avenues of their private world. Her creative process is to find hidden an exhaustible source of meaning inside a person. She is not overtly concerned with the contemporary political and economic issues like other major women novelist. Although broader issues to figure in our novels, they get us subsumed in the general design. She explores the interior regions of the dark mind. She is trying to direct her creative energies to depict individuals and not to state public themes. It may be said that the works of Anita Desai fall under the category of a psychological novel. Her attention is turned inward to the intricate working with the consciousness of an individual. She employs the language of the interior self and even when two characters meet. They use the language of their thoughts, their interior selves. The stream of consciousness technique employed by Anita Desai successfully retraces the dynamic equilibrium of the solitary being. The great discussion of separating content from form does not arise in the mechanics of Anita Desai. Technique or, or form is inextricably blended with the content, a perfect novel with a perf perfect balance. Or how to organize these two in order to reveal the individual, indivisible nature of a solitary individual, to put it in her own words. Our form is so inextricably linked with the content. I don't think you can separate to the two. Uh, commenting on her own characteristic style, Anita Desai offers this view. 
uh, next to this exploration of the underlining truth and the discovery of private mythology and philosophy it is style that interests me most and by this i mean the conscious labor of a uh, uniting language and the symbol word and rhythm without it language would remain a dull and uh, pedestrian vehicle i search for a style that will bring it to vivid surging life surging life one must find a way to unite the inner and outer rhythms to obtain a certain integrity and to impose order to choose if the novels are seen in this perspective of uniting word and rhythm the distinct individual style is connected to her secret meanings and new ways of perception and in this i finds that english is her language and it answers all my needs it is rich and flexible supples and adaptable varied and vital vital she discusses the role of english and its advantages to suit her needs i must confess that i am also sad that i should be writing in a language that in india has no tradition let us admit it english is at best an immigrant in india it was not originally a native even if it is almost one now it has never really taken root it is like a plant one would like to raise in one's garden a beautiful but difficult one one plants it in the sun it doesn't to do well one pulls out and plants it in the shade it droops one moves it to the damp spot near fertile then to dry one equally bad and so on and so on and so on one moves it about hopefully then closely i refuses to die but it never quite catches on either it is a refugee in the land like a refugee it is astonishingly tenacious she is successfully in bending a refugee to answer her unique demands anita desai attempts in the direction of the language of the interior for revealing the invisible part of human nature are the keys to explore her novels are emphasis on imagination which seizes upon the raw material of life shapes it into irony satire comedy tragedy or poetry and gives it artistic life as well as the emphasis on recording flashes of individual vision by a trained instinct should be kept in the mind while we are evaluating her fiction let us sum up where shall we go this summer is a fine achievement of anita desai as a distinguished novelist it follows the creative process as well as the individual flashes of vision and these are the distinct 